significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host of Significant TV, and joining me in the studio today is Sylvia Watts McKinney. Sylvia is Regional Director of NIFTY, Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Welcome to Significant TV. How Thank are you. you today? I'm good. Good. So we were talking earlier about this connection between entrepreneurship, particularly youth entrepreneurship, opportunities for youth, and youth unemployment. And the statistics are shocking. Um, share with me a little bit more and the audience what that connection is and why it's important to you as regional director. So as the world's changing pretty drastically now, um, think about your phone, you know, that oh you... Oh my goodness, do you I ever, can't do without? Exactly, <laughs> right. you know, that's, that's stuck to your body. Right. Um, in fact, I can forget my purse and my glasses, but I, you know, but I will not forget my phone. Mm -hmm. um, and all the things you could do on your phone. I mm -hmm. mean, I can, I can do banking, I can, that's right. I can tell you where I am at precise moments, I can use it for direction, I don't have to use maps anymore. So that, that's just a, a portion of how the world's changing through technology. Mm -hmm. And jobs are being replaced because technology is getting, you know, not necessarily more efficient, but certainly getting more available right. and accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, the, the goal now is to, you know, like the guy who runs these techn technological companies, uh, the late Steve Jobs and, yes. and all the others, yes. you know, they want to make sure technology is in every hand of every person, regardless of race, socioeconomic, your background, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there's a segment of our population, and those are people who are uh, from low-income environments that could potentially be left out, but yet very, very talented, because mm -hmm. they are of the generation of in this technological world. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, again, when I took the Uber over here and I was talking <laughs> about uh, Roberta Flack and uh -huh. um, and Donny Hathaway, <laughs> and you know, we talked about albums. And he was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, he's albums, going to see, yeah, exactly, CDs. exactly, exactly. That's almost like eight track tapes. Exactly, what, what, exactly. what is that? <laughs> exactly, what is that? So they've never seen an album. They've never seen a typewriter. Um, <laughs> but will they be ready? And, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. they will not because they're right. just not being prepared. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they don't have the talent. Right. So, so that's what we're doing at Nifty is matching up, you know, here's the problem. Uh, if we don't prepare this population of young people uh, to be ready to participate in the marketplace, uh, which is going to be more entrepreneurial than ever, uh, then they're going to be left out. So if they're going to be left out, how, in fact, do you prepare them? I mean, what is it about the entrepreneurial curriculum or the set of skills or maybe even how they think that helps you position them to be ready to be more competitive in the work world. So fundamentally, I believe technology is going to alleviate poverty. Mm. How about that Alleviate poverty? That is a big statement. Yes, that is. Okay, alleviate poverty. I do. I, okay. I do believe that. Tell uh, me more. Because I think, you know, um, you don't necessarily have to know who you're purchasing from when you're buying online. Okay. So okay. your perception of the, 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 the customer or the or the owner uh, changes, you know, when you go into a place. You mm -hmm. know, it just it's just natural. You know, mm -hmm. we live in a country where it's very race defined. So, mm -hmm. but if if I buy something uh, from someone online, I have no clue and no idea. No, you don't so, even think about it. You think about the product or service. Think right. about the product. If I have a good product yeah. and I have a great service, I'm going to continue being a repeat customer. Right. Right. Um, and all of those things from the history of of again. Uh, uh, that's been developed by race is not going to be part of that factor okay. and and you know so so I think if we can prepare young people who have great ideas to participate in this technology marketplace um, and their market is no longer just their zip code now mm -hmm. their market is all around the world right you know right, right. and there are all kinds of ways in which money now gets transacted you know, you don't need to get, you don't need to go to a bank. No, you, know, you don't even to, need cash. You don't even need cash, <laughs> you know, and all you need is a phone. Uh, nice. You'll be able to have, you know, financial transactions, you know. Okay. So, but what we have to teach young people, and again, and I've, my, my sweet spot is teaching young people who are from low-income communities is mm. financial literacy mm. because that's what they don't have, right. you know, and you see that all the time. You see major ath athletes and recording stars and, you know, make a ton of money, and, mm. and, and in the end, they have no money right. because they don't understand financial literacy. So, so we have to teach them that and teach them the soft skills 
Mm -hmm. Again, you know, you can be the smartest person in the room, uh, but if you have horrible, you know, social skills, nobody's going to want to do any business with you. Absolutely. So the importance of those soft skills are, you know, are super important. And I think you'll hear that from every entrepreneur that you talk with. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's your entrepreneurial story? How did you start to develop a passion? Uh, when I went out on LinkedIn, um, you were described as high energy, mm -hmm. visionary, <laughs> and passionate for service and integrity. And I would think as an entrepreneur, those are key elements. Mm -hmm. What's your entrepreneurial story? So, you know, I've always believed that you have to be in control of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and so when I was growing up, uh, what I noticed, I noticed two things when I was growing up. I noticed that, um, particularly in African-American communities, that when there was economic development, it really didn't mean economic development. It mm -hmm. meant economic removal. And so mm. uh, folks from mm -hmm. low-income communities would be removed from communities and they would be deposited in more communities that didn't have any resources. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem that anyone really cared about how that was happening. Mm -hmm. And so to join on the public side of that conversation was not getting anyone anywhere because the move was still happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I went to, um, you know, I went to MIT to become an urban planner, to be, mm -hmm. you know, to understand how that works and how to strengthen folks' voices who could not, uh, for whatever reason, be articulate about their needs, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and then from there, I actually worked as a real estate developer, um, developing low-income housing for families. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you that uh, one time, you know, we had a project where we had 24 uh, houses, and we had, a, a, you know, a buyer for every house. Mm -hmm. um, and when it was time for them to go get their mortgage, and we did everything, to help them get their mortgages. You know, we, we participate in the city programs to mm -hmm. buy down the interest rate. Right. Uh, we made the monthly payment, you know, extraordinarily, you know, within the rent that they had been paying. Mm -hmm. But when it was time to do the, uh, again, the mortgage application and go through that process, the biggest problem that showed up, and I think that this is the next civil rights battle to take on, mm -hmm. is the, you know, the credit, you know, companies. Mm -hmm. And during those days, because of now the technology, uh, every single family had a credit problem. Mm -hmm. And these were people who worked, you know, mom worked, dad worked, two jobs, you know, they, it, wasn't, it wasn't an issue that they were not working, they worked. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to be a part of the American dream. Sure. Uh, and so what we had to do was had to hire a, a credit consultant, you know, and the credit consultant literally cleaned up, I think of the 16 or 18 families because we sold four of the units to the city, it cleaned up everybody's credit with the exception of one. And wow. so I learned through that process you know, how, again, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, can work on so many different levels, okay. you know, and we were able to get uh, these families who had never owned a home in their entire generation, you know, uh, you know, the first time to own a house, mm -hmm. because it takes five generations to get people out of poverty, you know, five. so it, it takes five generations, so if oh. you can cut out a generation, and again, and use technology by mm -hmm. cutting out that generation, you know, you're, again, you're now going to help produce more talent in the marketplace mm -hmm. and more talent is going to be more creative and more creativity is going to, you know, again, as, as I firmly believe, is going to alleviate, you know, this, this notion of poverty in our country. Alleviating po poverty. That certainly is uh, a higher calling. It is a high calling. Mm -hmm. But you have to, you, you, have, you have to make it such that mm -hmm. this country is way too has way too many resources mm -hmm. that we should have kids who go to schools, you know, that mimic and act like their prisons. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's like this, if you've never had good food uh, all your life, you know, uh, you don't know what good food is, right. you're gonna continue to eat bad food, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so if you've never been in a school setting where it is, you know, where it's, it's, uh, it's exciting and is, you know, it's dynamic um, and you're, you know, and you're willing and you want to learn, you, you, you'll never know what a school is. Mm -hmm. And so you will expect as you're going forward, you know, to be in settings that look like what you, you're used to. Mm -hmm. this, this happens with kids who go to college uh, from low-income communities. You know, you get that one kid who gets, you know, admitted to Harvard, mm -hmm. right? right? You know, not a person in the whole entire family has ever gone to college. Mm -hmm. And so, but, you know, but, they've, but they've been told all their lives that they're very, very smart. You know, mm -hmm. they're very, very, very smart. Uh, they go to Harvard, 
and they find out that they're with very, very, very smart people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? Um, and this is the first time that they actually have to compete with very smart people. Um, and so, and they might not have been academically prepared mm -hmm. because of the schooling that they've had. So now they got to compete with, you know, with folks who've been extraordinarily well academically prepared. You know, and they might not have the social skills. Mm -hmm. So if you can't make friends in school. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, and you, and you can't uh, have the social life. You mm -hmm. know, you're now stuck to just being only academic, and it doesn't provide you with the balance that you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why, you know, as a community, we have to embrace, you know, young people who want to, and those who don't know they want to, you know, to, you know, to to be bold, to be courageous, you know, and go for what they want. But at the same time, put those cushions in place. Because children who are in affluent communities have those cushions. Right, right. Let's bring it back. Mm -hmm. I, I love the passion. You're really talking about the core. Mm -hmm. um, let's bring it back to how you and your role mm -hmm. as regional director uh, with NIFTI can now influence um, the direction within the tri state area. Mm -hmm. So the way we, we do it, of course, is we have a very rigorous, you know, curriculum, you know, mm -hmm. so no one can question our expertise. We mm -hmm. are the go-to people when you want to talk about entrepreneurship and particularly when you want to talk about youth and entrepreneurship. What's the curriculum like for those that may not be familiar? So it is it's more than the question, what is an entrepreneur? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we just we do start off with that question and how do you spell it? You know, um, We've but had it, that discussion. <laughs> exactly. But it also goes into helping them understand, you know, return on investment, you know, mm -hmm. return on income. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps them understand economics of one unit. It helps them to understand opportunity recognition. Okay. Um, so it takes a very, very, very deep dive into, again, uh, understanding the terminology and what the terminology mm. mean, you know, right. means. Now, I'm not suggesting they walk out as experts in, you know, business because mm -hmm. one does have to go to business school for two right. years, you know, right. and even folks who go to business school for two years don't necessarily, <laughs> yeah, no. you know, know it because um, right. you have to have experience, right. you know. So, so what we do is we introduce these terms, we give them a taste of how to apply these, you know. Mm -hmm. We we ask them to create a business, to create a prototype of that Excellent. business, Excellent. to compete before real people who are in business, you know, each and every day. Um, and, and, and with that, we give them a lot of feedback. And for those students who want to stay with us, we provide them with ongoing support. Fabulous. When you look across your years in being involved in NIFTI, NIFTI's changed. Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> where do you see NIFTI and the students that are involved with NIFTI going? And how does that matter to the community? A big question for sort of the last minute. <laughs> yeah. So, so. I think Nifty has to change if it mm -hmm. wants to be entrepreneurial. Everybody mm -hmm. talks about disruption, you know, mm -hmm. and being a disruptor. I mean, that's the terminology. Right, right. As of kind two, of why I asked the question. Right. <laughs> that's a two, 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 2017. So, so we have to also understand what is disruption, but mm -hmm. but we have to couple with what is disruption with what is justice. Ah. You know, and that mm -hmm. conversation, the two of them do not necessarily take place in the same space, mm -hmm. right? You know, because, you know, yes, it, one thing about technology is that you are making money because you are delivering a service, you know, mm -hmm. to people. But, but at the same time, for those companies that want to demonstrate more than making money and they want to give back to the community, we are a wonderful resource in which mm -hmm. for, for them to give back to the community. Um, we are training young people, again, with an entrepreneurial mindset. So mm -hmm. what that simply means is, you know, how to pivot, you know, yes, how to uh, collaborate with people, how to work mm -hmm. as a team, uh, you know, again, how to um, seize opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so when they leave us, they will have a, a stronger sense of the entrepreneurial mindset because we will test them in the beginning of the year and we will test them at the end of the year to see what that is. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year, they have constant uh, ways in which to see how the entrepreneurial mindset works. And then when they leave the program, they really do begin to have what I call a network of social mm -hmm. capital, mm -hmm. you know, because they're going to meet bankers along the way. They're going right. to meet. They're going to meet CEOs. I mean, we have a business plan competition on the 23rd, and uh, our judges are, you know, five top folks from the region. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, um, you know, uh, uh, Lisa Crutchfield, yes. who used to be, you know, a number two person at the Chamber of Commerce, and before mm -hmm. that, I mean, you know, she's in the utilities. She's a utilities right. expert. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Alexis uh, Wolf 
uh, who is Wolfson, who is a, uh, a senior VP at Connor Strong, you know, mm -hmm. which again, insurance company. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when kids think about insurance, and I'm sorry to say this, in the low income communities, they think about when you, bur you bury somebody. Right. You know, insurance <laughs> is a whole new field of how to do mm -hmm. wealth creation. Right. You know, so we open up those doors for them to see it in that whole context. We have Scott Snyder, mm -hmm. who is the chief technology officer at Safeguard Scientifics, mm -hmm. you know, who'll be there. Mm -hmm. We have Emika. Uh, and I, his name is U G U O U G H, I think. Mm -hmm. He has a, a company called, um, I think it's People Joy. Mm -hmm. So his his uh, company, uh, as a benefit to other companies, figure out how you get um, uh, your loans reduced because mm -hmm. all of these young people will be walking out with a ton of loans. Right, but from college. That's exactly <laughs> right. So, but if you can offer an incentive, as if I work for you, you're going to reduce my loans, you mm -hmm. know, you're going to get some employees. Because sure. as colleges and as schools need children to be in the seats, mm -hmm. uh, businesses will need talented people to be in their companies. You know, wow. so so we're not claiming that we are going to produce uh, technically talented people. We're mm -hmm. claiming that we're going to produce people who have the capacity to learn and want to learn. And as a result of giving a fair shot, we'll be able to make positive contributions to the community. That is what will change. But at the same time, we have to be conscious of the psychological impact on these young people. And so we have to couple them with support. So when they run into these bumps along the way, you know, they have a resources or resource system in which to, you know, to fall back on. That's how it's done. That's yeah, how I, it's done every place else in the world, right. you know, and it can be done here. But one has to believe it can be done, you know, and that's, and that's how the world has changed. Disruption. Disruption. Social justice. Social justice. Entrepreneurship. Absolutely. All in one sentence. Impact. <laughs> Sylvia, <laughs> you are significant. And your Thank vision you. is significant. Thank you. And uh, really, it's been a pleasure Thank to have you, so you on much. the show. Um, we've known each other for a number of sure, years, sure. and it's really kind of exciting to see how your story has unfolded right. and the impact that you're having on youth. Significant stories significant entrepreneurs, significant leaders, a significant Sylvia, clearly. <laughs> Nifty Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship is here in the Philadelphia region, and Sylvia Watts McKinney is the Regional Director of Nifty. Thank you again for watching Significant TV.